reload. You gotta reload. You gotta reload, Liam. There you go. <laughs> oh, someone needs to reload. Are <laughs> you having fun? Boys are having fun with their new Christmas presents. They got laser tag guns from their Uncle Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. They're also wearing their new boots from their Gigi. So they're pretty excited. You like those boots? Yeah, they even have these. Oh, boy. They're comfy, huh? Get in, get in, reload it. It is January 1st. So I have to say Happy New Year. Hope everybody had a wonderful evening bringing in the new year. We uh, stayed home with the boys and had some sparkling juice at midnight and it was quite fun. It was nice, nice and relaxing. So I hope everybody had a good, safe New Year's and that the new year finds you healthy and well. When the old one starts on the night I tell you, I really, really like changing out the oats for shredded beet pulps in the winter time because it really helps maintain a healthier weight on all of our goats through the winter, including our bucks. Oftentimes you'll hear from uneducated vets and misinformed individuals that Bucks shouldn't have grain because it causes urinary calculi. Well, that's not necessarily true. What causes urinary calculi is an imbalance of phosphorus and calcium. So if your calcium isn't high enough and your phosphorus gets high, that's where the urinary calculi comes in. The majority of most urinary calculi cases come from too much phosphorus in the diet, not too much calcium. So when they tell you, or if you hear from somebody, not to feed alfalfa to bucks, that's actually very inaccurate and actually could be causing the problem in most situations. Now, if you're feeding just alfalfa to the bucks, you could end up with an imbalance of too much calcium. You want a two to one to four to one ratio of calcium to phosphorus. So your calcium should be two to four times as much as your phosphorus. If you're feeding just alfalfa, your calcium is gonna be much higher than that. Um, and that's where you could end up with stones that are caused by calcium. And that's where this myth began, is there are some situations where stones can form from calcium, but most of the time, it's the opposite. It's actually being caused by the too high of a phosphorus in the feed. Now, the beet pulp doesn't add a whole lot of nutritional value, honestly. Um, it's not high in anything that's super important for the winter, but what it does add is an extra boost of calories for the winter, which helps them stay at a healthy weight. And my bucks, after being in rut, always need that extra weight added on. And my does that are carrying babies or are about to be bred have always needed that as well. So it's really a good thing that we like to do in the winter. You guys aren't gonna believe it. Look how big they've grown. All those babies are now big, full-size quail. We could probably turn this light off. Um, I'm gonna wait till this cold front that's moving through right now is over with before I do that. And when we get another warm front, I'll go ahead and turn that off. And that is exactly what I was coming over here to show you. Did you hear that? Which one did it? One of these three. I think it was this one, possibly. But I heard that quail crow, and I thought, surely that's coming from the other crib, which has our breeding colony with full-size males. Nope. There we go. We've got a male. So we know that one is a male. If we pay really close attention to the markings on his head, it'll be easy when it comes time to separating out males. We are planning on retaining all of our females from this hatch, but not all of our males. 
So we want our ratio of male to female to be appropriate, which is usually about one rooster to 10 hens. They could go with six or eight if you have a smaller colony. But what we have found is that when we only have three hens with one rooster, that they tend to get a little bit beat up in their feathers from breeding so much. They sure do grow fast though. It's, I mean, they were born the weekend of Thanksgiving and it's January 1st and we've already got crowing. So we could see eggs any day then if, we, if we're hearing crowing. It's conceivable. That's been one of the biggest things I love about having quail on the homestead is how fast of a turnaround it is before we can see egg and meat production out of hatching our own. It's a very quick turnover in process and it's very easy. The quail are so easy. So seriously, if you haven't thought about getting quail, I'm here to tell you, you need quail in your life. If you're looking for a sustainable food source that's quick and easy and cheap, this is the way to go. And did I mention delicious? The eggs are so rich and delicious and the meat is perfect. It's like a sweet, delicious, mm. oh, I'm dreaming of my next quail meal. <laughs> Fancy too, I think you're lying. I think she's been pretending to come back in the heat. What do y'all think? I notice her lower belly is huge and round. So could she be bred and just having a false heat? It is possible. I am now quite positive that Hearts is not bred. She came into heat the other day and it was pretty clear signs of heat. So I'm pretty sure with her having a smaller girth and no other development that she's probably not bred. So she will be on the list to get bred this month. Truly is also on the list to be bred this month. Fancy too if she is pretending or not will be put in with the bucks. And it's possible that Shady's not bred. So if we breed those four this coming month, that'll stagger our milk production nicely. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. You were supposed to go to freezer camp in December. Daddy decided he couldn't do it. It's, it's just too hard for us to raise one of our own. I, I don't know. I think it's because we make them too nice. We make them too sweet. Look at him. How could you, how could you eat that? I mean, she's pregnant. Oh, he's got some ugly scurves there, doesn't he? That's my fault. I did him too late and Alpines really have to do right on time or early even compared to Nubians. <laughs> Big difference. So it is, don't bark at the kitty. She's our kitty. She's protecting our farm. Just like you, she's got a job too. Titus saw the barn cat. Ruff, ruff. Big, big scary dog. Khaleesi's so sweet. She doesn't hardly bark at anything unless it's definitely a, a predator issue. She's so sweet and calm. I just love her. I asked Ryan last night if we could bring her in to snuggle while we let New Year's Eve come in. Let her New Year come in. She's so sweet. Sweet good girl. He's just a rowdy little, rowdy little fella. He's still a pup though. Livestock guardian dogs are definitely a whole different thing. It's it's not the same as raising a regular dog that's a pet. It's very different. Um, there's a lot of training involved and a completely different type of training. And it's been it's been an adjustment getting used to the differences with them versus having a pet that I take in the house and cuddle with on New Year's Eve. <laughs> but I think that once Titus settles down, it's been an adjustment for me and really a learning curve for me. Um, I know that livestock guardian dogs under two years old can't be trusted alone with the livestock, even with 
a lot of training. So I've been doing a slightly different method than most by keeping them close by to the goats. My goats, unfortunately, are terrified of dogs. So anytime that I have tried to do slow, careful, calm introductions on the leash, my goats are the ones that are triggering the dogs to act different. So I think that once Titus isn't doing the puppy reaction that he does when he sees a goat move fast, once he's getting through that stage of his life cycle, things will go a lot smoother with the introductions inside with the goats. I think Khaleesi could probably be inside with the goats at this point. She's, she's very mature for her age um, and very calm natured. So Titus has a little bit more prey drive. It's probably because he isn't a pure LGD. He has a little bit of other guardian dogs in him, but, oh, as you can tell, he sees the cat and he starts to bark again. Mitzi, what's he got against you? You're just a sweet little barn kitty kitchen mice and rats. And the occasional chipmunk. <laughs> Rowan, where are you going? To go home to go on my Chromebook tail. Your Chromebook? Yeah. Yeah. You want to go play on that, Rowan, yeah. Liam? Yeah. But you can't play games on it, right? But there's educational. That's right. It's for your school, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you've been really excited about school since you got your Chromebooks for Christmas, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Can you say thank you? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, that's a big thank you to our friends who got them Chromebooks for Christmas. They're so excited. All right. Who's going to get there first? <laughs> Me. I you don't want to do races. My legs hurt. Your legs hurt. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I say too, buddy. Yeah. Just take your time. You don't have to race. I don't feel like running. You don't have to. All right, guys. I got to get inside and make some black-eyed peas, collard greens, and cornbread for dinner tonight. I hope y'all are bringing in New Year with whatever traditions you like to do or superstitions for good luck but I'll take them all superstitions or not happy new year everyone <laughs>